This is Kevin Cole at the University of Nebraska. The topic is thermodynamics and the example is relative pressure. This example we're asked to look at the compression stroke in a piston engine with air starting at one atmosphere and 60 Fahrenheit and it's going to be compressed to 2,000 pounds per square inch absolute. We have to find the final temperature, assuming the process is isentropic, using the gas tables and using CV equals constant theory. So the geometry we're asked to think about is a cylinder with a piston in it. And let's say the piston location is here at state one. And in state two, the piston moves up to some final location. And the volume starts out a large volume uh, trapped in the cylinder and a smaller volume, and that produces the pressure rise. For uh, using the gas tables to start with, and we're told that it's an isentropic process. If the process is isentropic, there's a special relationship we can use that says that the actual pressure ratio for the gas property is equal to a quantity PR2 divided by PR1, where PR is taken from the air tables, and PR is the relative pressure. Now, it's not really a pressure. It's a function of temperature that's useful only in an isentropic process. So the only time you can use PR is with this pressure relationship. And uh, what's the air table? Well, we're going to use table A22E from a source that we have. Let's take a look. And let's look up the one we know. We know the initial condition is uh, 60 Fahrenheit. Let's go look up that relative pressure for that situation. So here's the uh, idle gas properties of air, table A22E from a particular source. Uh, everything in this table is a function of temperature. Temperature comes down this way, but temperature is Rankine. So we need to take our 60 Fahrenheit and we need to add 460 to get 520 Rankine. That's our beginning state. and We're lucky to have that entry here. There's uh, six columns. Over in this co these two columns it says when delta S equals zero, that means isentropic, then we have P sub R and V sub R. So the P sub R value at our initial state is this one, 1.2147. So let's transfer that back. So we've got PR at uh, 60 Fahrenheit. Well, it's the same as 520 Rankine is uh, 1.2147. Well, we can use this if PR is a function of temperature. We can use it to find the final PR, which will help us to find the uh, final temperature. So I'll say solve for PR2. That's going to be PR1 times P2 over P1. Now we can put some numbers in. PR2 is going to be uh, 1.2147 times our pressure ratio, we've got 2,000 divided by 14.7. This is an ideal gas calculation, so these, these quantities here have better be absolute. How do we know we've got absolute pressure? Well, here's PSI A, 2,000 PSI A for the final condition, 14.7 PSI A for the initial condition. So those are indeed absolute temperatures. I'm sorry, absolute pressures. And when I compute that, I got 165. Point three. Now this is the final value of the relative pressure. We can go back to the table at PR equals 165.3 and look up T2. Let's go do that. So here's the table. Uh, coming down this column here, we've got uh, PR values of this start up at 1. Here's a value of six something. It's not high enough. We come down to nine and we run out of space. Well, the table continues in the next column. Here's temperature again, continuing down. Here's PR, here's 10, here's 100. And the value of 165.3 falls between these two entries. So the temperature falls between 1950 Rankine and 2000 Rankine. So if we can interpolate this, and I'll, I'll trust you to check my interpolation. Uh, if we're going to have to interpolate, and 
and we'll find that T2 is uh, 1973 Rankine, which is the same as 1513 Fahrenheit. So there's the answer for T2 using the, the uh, air tables. And the temperature, of course, gets quite warm with that amount of compression. Part B, we're asked to find the uh, final temperature using CV equals constant theory. I'll scroll up a bit here. And in CV, CV equals constant theory, we use a quantity called the specific heat ratio. And for air at 60 Fahrenheit, it's a uh, 1.4. And that's the value that we know, so let's grab that value and run with it. Now, for an isentropic process, we have a collection of relationships constructed from using uh, ideal gas relations. And one of them is the temperature ratio is equal to the pressure ratio to a power k minus 1 divided by k. And we can use this, of course, to find T2. So I'm going to solve for T2 equals T1 times P2 over P1. And the power is k minus 1 divided by k. Let's put some numbers in. We've got uh, 60 Fahrenheit for T1. Well, it's got to be absolute, so we're going to add 460. Anytime you do an ideal gas calculation, you must use absolute temperature and absolute pressures. Our pressure ratio, the final pressure is 2,000 PSIA, and the initial one is 14.7 PSIA. Our uh, exponent is going to be K minus 1, which is 0 0.4, divided by K, which is 1.4. When I turn the crank on that, I find that T2 is equal to 2116.6 Rankine. Uh, that's quite a bit different than the earlier value. What's going on here? Well, this is an approximate theory. That's an approximate theory. What's the percent error for this approximate theory? It's going to be 2116. 0.6 minus the good value, 1.1973 divided by 1973 times 100%. And I get a 7.3% error. That's pretty big. Why would an engineer be interested in a large error? Well, this, this theory, we can compute this without a table. That's an advantage. And it gives the correct trend. Sometimes correct trend. Sometimes engineers need the trend more than they need an accurate final value. And so this must be a this may be we'll, we'll call this a, a quick and dirty method. All right. Um, let's recap. We're doing a, a, an example of a piston in a cylinder, and we have an extreme change in pressure, and we're asked to find the change in temperature if it's an isentropic process. For isentropic processes, we have some special relationships. Using the air tables, we have this pressure ratio is equal to the ratio of the relative pressure, which is a temperature function that has no units. <clears throat> the only place where this is useful is with this equation, and we interpolated to find a final answer. The, uh, but we needed a table to do that, a particular table. There's also a CV equals constant theory that's approximate, and there's a collection of relationships that are algebraic involving the specific heat ratio, and this gives us a quick and dirty answer. And uh, the value isn't that great, but sometimes engineers need a trend. And if you remember that, all will be well.